okay everybody so this is this is a, a video that everybody wanted and I kind of noticed this after I well, I shot a video for uh, Don't Stop December that uh, was <clears throat> titled When I Came Home Jewish and uh, I was going to do that video but it was like what really made me do it is I did a blab with uh, Lady Nika, James Colwell and Sean Bradley. Sean Bradley actually hosted it and he had asked me like you know well what like what was your family's reaction <clears throat> when you came home and i'm just like because we talked about a lot in that video i'm just like you're gonna have to wait for me to do a video because i actually want that uploaded for people to uh see and i kind of anticipated that i would get asked a question and everybody wanted to know okay well, what caused you to convert to uh judaism so uh that's what i'm gonna give you guys today <clears throat> hopefully um I guess it sheds a, a little bit of light. I will also say that, um, you know, um, please be respectful. Um, in general, I will not come off my throne and sit here and, you know, act as a commoner, but there are certain things that I don't play around with. <clears throat> this right here being one of them. And like I said, uh, my sister, Lady Nika, I think she can verify this because when you, sis, when you watch this, just put eight men down at the bottom. Uh, if she see any comments, she gonna get somebody to smooth the fuck together. So let us not do that. But um, <clears throat> to kind of put this into perspective, um, I'm gonna leave a couple of videos uh, tagged in here again if I remember. And um, <clears throat> I would like for you guys to watch uh, those videos, whether you want to pause this, watch them now, or however we want you want to do it. But um, uh, I'm like I said because I'm gonna reference one. But I'm not going to talk too much about it. But um, <clears throat> growing up, um, like I said, uh, <clears throat> the way our uh, family uh, dynamic was is, uh, like I said, we stay on the west side of Chicago and we stay in apartment style buildings, multi, uh, actually, I really don't want to say multi because multi family houses are more or less like what they have in the ghettos. But um, pretty much it was um, <clears throat> three floors, basement, first floor, second floor. So, uh, in one building, um, going top down, so second floor to the basement, we had uh, my Uncle Kenny, my Uncle Patricia, and my Aunt, Uncle Kenny, Aunt Patricia, Aunt Alfreda. I think I might have called my Aunt Patricia my uncle. I don't know. It's one of them days. And then the other building, it was my family, my grandparents, and then my cousin, uh, Defonso, who was my uh, aunt. Alfreda's son so that was pretty much our family dynamic the only uh, person that wasn't there was my aunt uh, Jeanette she was with her husband in South Holland Illinois but pretty much we all were literally right there everybody with their kids and um, <clears throat> I I grew very very close to my grandmother very very close like I was up under her so much and that and she was in the kitchen a lot too so that's where I where I got that fascination of wanting to cook you know and it was just seeing her prepare everything and uh, from what I saw my grandmother was a godly woman like <clears throat> when you think about a woman or a man of God my grandmother embodied that and I love that about her I really did like you know, I said she was carrying this and the third, you know, I mean, you know, she got me together when she needed to. And that was my granddaddy. He, he, he mm, his, his was, the, you know, spare the rock, spoil the challenge. He, mm, mm, he wasn't spoiling nothing. But I was extreme, like, I was close to my grandparents, but I was extremely close to my grandmother. I was closer to my grandmother than I was my mother, you know. And, uh, you know, like I said, I lost both of my grandparents within a month of each other, uh, right before and after I turned 10, my birthday's on December 23rd. So I lost my grandfather <clears throat> um, when I was nine, uh, right before Thanksgiving. And then after I turned 10, I lost my grandmother on the 27th of December. Uh, so all in one year. <clears throat> and a year before I lost uh, my aunt, uh, Alfreda, and uh, my uh, uncle Kenny. So within two years, lost four people. And the last two happened to be the pillars of my mother's side of the family. And I went to a deep depression, uh, contemplated suicide, and a whole lot. And that's the other video where if you really want to know that whole story, like I say, you can check that one out. I'm not going to talk about that. But um, in the midst of that, um, you know, I can't, it was one of those where <clears throat> in the midst of being suicidal, I was like trying to find every, it was like, and I was in a dark place, you know, and it was like as much as I'm because I thought of every which way of how I can go about killing myself every which way but it seemed like there was always this light and there was always a voice that's just like no nah. 
we're not going to do this in the midst of all the pain the hurt the sorrow the regret there was always something pushing me <clears throat> and i believe that you know it was god and as i looked at my family you know i'm like okay my grandmother was a godly woman but then i look at the rest of my family i'm just like okay if all of y'all serve the same god but only one is right it was one of those ways like not everybody represented even when we would go to church it was just like okay so we we go to church y'all cutting up in church in a y'all know what i mean by cutting up but then we come home and it's almost just like it was like everything that you just heard you left or you picked up this persona as soon as you walked into the sanctuary and it seemed like when you left you left that persona there it's just like it's not that it resonated with any of the family and these morals these values these standards that you know you supposedly have they don't exist in the everyday life so i'm like okay let me because i really do feel that it was god that kept me from killing myself so i'm just like let me find god for who i you know let, like let me find him for me let me seek a relationship and not religion that was my entire mindset is I want to, you know, find God for myself. I don't want to find God for who my mother knows going to be my father, this person, that person. Let me seek a relationship. And I think that was what has been different. Like that's that was just my thing is seeking a relationship. And it was a spiritual journey. So, you know, as I'm reading the Bible, I connected more with the Old Testament. It was something about the Old Testament that just seems so genuine to me. Okay, and I was just like, all right, and you know, I studied. It wasn't, you know, pastor so and so, reverend so and so, deacon so and so, priest so and so said anything. It was me digging, you know, and even to quote, you know, the New Testament, you know, you be, need to be able to rightly divide the word of God and study to show thyself approved in the eyes of God. So it was me studying for myself, and you know trying to decipher the word and what it meant for me but also seeking out god for myself and in the midst of doing that you know i took hold to the 10 commandments even though like i said there are 613 but i took hold to those 10 <clears throat> as i was studying i'm like okay well there's kosher law so i started to add that into you know my daily practices well actually going back to the 10 commandments you know remember my sabbath keep it holy did my research from my research, you know, I said, there's the Jewish Sabbath, and I went with the Jewish Sabbath, you know, since that is, because <clears throat> I'm going by the book here. Um, when it came to getting to the book of Leviticus, you know, there was the aspects of the kosher law. So I started to follow that, you know, not to the extreme that I have, you know, during and after the conversion, but this is just like the early stages. Like a lot of this was just like early stages. And it started adding things and again like my heart was with the old testament but it was because my family was christian by virtue that is what i claimed and um when i went to college uh there was a class like introduction to judaism and they like it was just something about me it's like you know what like everything is kind of lining up i just wasn't ready to convert but i still kept the jewish sabbath like even when i worked at target while i was in college i let them know like i will not work uh because i work nights i like i would never work friday night because the jewish sabbath is from friday sunset to saturday sunset so i'm like the only day i will not work is friday night they did everything they could talking about something we would give you you know the whole eight hours we might, we might even let you work 10 or 12 hours if you work friday i'm like no <clears throat> it was one of those it's like i you know i'm, I'm not gonna be bought that's not gonna happen so like like that's just how I felt and you know for what it's worth I guess uh, just with my practice I was considered Judeo-Christian if you will and um, when I was uh, in Alabama and I was working one of all the students that I worked was just like hey there's a synagogue in Dothan and I'm like really so I went there um, <clears throat> and the crazy thing is that synagogue happened to be reformed and honestly I always knew that I would convert and like I said, I am reformed. I'm a reformed Jew because by virtue of um, the uh, synagogue that I went to, they're reformed. Had it been Orthodox, I probably be Orthodox, uh, Orthodox uh, Jew right now. So, <clears throat> but um, I went there, and it was just like one. Everybody was so friendly, and the, and like I said, like I'm close with everybody that is in there. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, like we had, like I built relationships with a lot, and this, like I said, most, most, most of the regulars were women, and you know the older women, they loved the hell out of me. But I'm getting too far ahead, but. And they were so welcoming, so warm. I went for a Shabbat service, and it was just something about just the aura, the atmosphere, the tours being uh, pulled out, the chanting. It was something about it that was just so calming to my spirit. And it was then I'm like, okay, this is the place that I'm meant to be. This is the place that I'm meant to be. And from there, <clears throat> I continue to go to uh, Shabbat services I will go to tour study on Saturday morning so you know like I was <clears throat> in there and I was like you know what I think I'm ready because it seemed like everything just lined up and I'm not gonna lie <clears throat> I I had to think about converting I really did because I know uh, in the New Testament it says if you deny me before man I will deny you before the father and a part of converting uh, to Judaism, you have to go through a bed deen, which is uh, pretty much a Jewish court, <clears throat> so to speak. And you're going to get hammered with questions. And it's pretty much to test the uh, validity of your conversion to ensure that you are converting for the right reasons and it's not for anything selfish. And um, <clears throat> I knew that <clears throat> not only then, but during the formal conversion ceremony that I would have to denounce Christianity so I mean it was just a lot going with that and I was just praying just like you know what like because my whole thing is God I'm seeking you I'm not seeking religion <clears throat> so just let me know if I'm going in the right direction because my thing is this places and things places that I wanted to go and things that I wanted to do <clears throat> God has closed in that door let me tell you and when I say close the door close that shut so I knew, and it was one of those where I'm like, if this isn't meant for me, this door will close. <clears throat> and the door didn't close. And trust me when I say I pondered it. It was one of those things that it was a back and forth, back and forth. I even had to talk to my friends. It's like, you know, this is what I'm thinking about doing. I don't know. It's like I want to do it, but I'm not really sure. <clears throat> and when I finally went to uh, my rabbi, she was like, I always knew you were going to convert. But I wasn't going to, like, none of us, we were going to ask you. We wanted that to be your decision. And that right there just solidified it when I actually went to say, I want to convert to Judaism. Because, <clears throat> you know, in Christianity, it's just like you go <clears throat> to somebody's church. By the end of service, it's like, do you want to join? We you going to join? <clears throat> but with uh, Judaism, it's just like, if this is what you want, you will let us know. <clears throat> we're not going to bombard you with it. And I will have to say by far, it's probably the best decision that I have made. And you know, this has just been my walk. It has just been, you know, me seeking God and trying to keep God first in everything that I do. And even in certain aspects of my life, I've had people look at me just like, you know what? God must really love you or you must be doing something right <laughs> with certain things that I've just played out in my life. And it's just like, I'm not gonna say that it's Judaism per se, because here's my theory um, when it comes to searching out God. <clears throat> I, Yarrell, believe that searching God, searching for God is like going up a mountain. There's not one way up that mountain, you know, so we're all going up the mountain and we're all picking, you know, different routes, whether it be Islam, whether it be Judaism, you know, whether it be Kabbalah, whether it be <clears throat> Christianity. We're all trying to get to the top of that mountain. We're just going about it a different way. And I'm not gonna sit here and downplay you for the way in which you choose to search for God, as long as your um, walk doesn't, you know, hurt me in any way, shape or form, I'm good for it. So uh, that's my story. <clears throat> Hopefully uh, I've explained everything that I need to. Um, and yeah, that is it you guys. So rate, comment, subscribe and share. Jumpstart January 2016. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.